Um, so good morning, hello. Uh, I'm Neil Roberts. Um, I work on the graphics team at Agalia, and I'm going to talk about VK Runner. Um, so that's an overview of the talk. Um, so what is VK Runner? So um, as you know, I'm sure, um, on a modern graphics driver, uh, the biggest part of the driver is basically a, a compiler. Um, so when uh, developing the driver, the biggest thing you want to test is obviously the compiler. Um, so VK Runner is um, a tool to help um, test running shaders on your Vulkan driver. Um, so it's inspired by, um, there's a tool in Piglet. So Piglet is um, a test suite for OpenGL. And um, Piglet has a tool called Shader Runner, um, which is basically the same thing. Um, it lets you write uh, little test scripts, which um, just have shaders in them, and um, a few test commands to, to, to run the shaders. So Vul uh, VK Runner is the same idea, um, but for Vulkan. Um, so you want, it, has, it tries to have the minimal um, overhead to, to, to write a test just with a simple script. Um, So that, that's uh, an example of a complete script. Um, so it has like the Windows any format uh, with a section for each shader. Um, so in this case, uh, for the vertex shader, um, I've just said vertex shader pass through. That's just um, a, a shortcut to make um, a, a, a minimal vertex shader, which just copies um, one attribute um, over to geo position. And then I've uh, made a, a little fragment shader, um, which just um, outputs green. Um, and then in the, the last section is the, the test section. So it's a really high level language um, to just uh, run some tests with the shader. So in this case, uh, draw rect, it just draws a full screen rectangle. And then probe, uh, that probes the, the, the frame buffer for the color. Um, and then to run it, um, so it's just a, a standalone program. You just uh, run it. Um, with the name of the script on the command line, and it tells you whether it worked or not. Uh, and in this case, it didn't work because uh, uh, the shader wrote a green color out, um, and then uh, it's probing for a, a red color. So it's telling you it got the wrong color. Um, so, so behind the scenes, um, so that's um, VK Runner, because um, uh, on Vulkan, um, it can't consume GLSL shaders, obviously. So um, it needs to con convert, uh, consume uh, SPUR-V shaders. So um, VK Runner um, compiles the GLSL shaders into SPUR-V by invoking GLSL lang as an external process. Um, and it creates uh, pipelines because uh, for, for all of the state that it's needed to run the commands. Um, and it creates um, an off-screen frame buffer. Um, so uh, unlike uh, Shader Runner on Piglet, uh, so uh, on uh, Shader Runner it uses the window system to create uh, an actual like X window or a Wayland window or whatever. Uh, on uh, VK Runner, because um, you don't necessarily need a window system for Vulkan, it just uses an off-screen buffer, um, and then it puts all the test commands into a command buffer and executes them, and then uh, you can probe the result as one of the test commands. Um, so the, just a bit of history, uh, why did uh, we start working on this? Um, so Agalia has also been working on um, adding uh, SPUR-V support to um, Intel's OpenGL driver. So that's via the ARBGL SPUR-V extension. Um, so on the Intel i965 driver, um, the, the, the compiler for OpenGL SPUR-V and Vulkan SPUR-V, um, it's, it's the same compiler. Um, so we were testing um, the uh, SPUR-V on OpenGL by uh, converting um, a bunch of, uh, by trying to automatically convert most of the shader runner tests in Piglet um, to SPUR-V. So we had uh, a script uh, started by Nicolo Hanlight, and uh, we continued working on that um, to convert um, a huge amount of tests from Piglet um, um, into SPUR-V, and um, I think that ended up testing uh, quite a lot more of the um, just the general SPUR-V compiler than had been tested with the, the, the Kronos CTS test, so um, it picked up um, a few more problems that uh, perhaps weren't seen before. So uh, when we ran into a problem on the OpenGL SPUR-V, 
we often weren't sure whether that's a problem that we'd introduced on the SPURV extension or whether that was just an existing problem with the SPURV compiler. So we really wanted a quick way, a quick way to be able to run the shader tests that we had from a shader runner and run them with the, the Vulkan API as well. Um, so, so yeah, so VK runner was just um, uh, uh, a way to try and um, have a utility that works um, as close as possible to the script format a shader runner, but obviously just runs on Vulkan. Um, uh, okay, so so uh, uh, there are. It's not quite exactly the same script format because obviously Vulkan is a different API, so it works uh, slightly differently. Uh, so, for example, on OpenGL, um, there's a lot more API um, to query state about um, the shaders. So, for example, when you compile a shader, you can uh, use the OpenGL API to query what uniforms are available and what the names are. Um, but Vulkan, um, you're expected to know what you've done, so it doesn't give you any API to tell you what you did. <laughs> so. Um, so we can't, uh, for example, use uh, uniform names in the test commands um, in Shader Runner. Um, I have an example. Uh, so this is an example with uh, Shader Runner using um, uh, OpenGL. Um, so in the shader, um, it's got these uh, global uniforms. Uh, uh, this is what everyone's used to, I guess. Um, and um, so they're just in some sort of magic global namespace, and the driver is expected to, to put them somewhere. And, and um, they have names. And um, in the test commands, uh, you can use the actual name you had there uh, to set the value of the uniform. And the shader runner um, uses the OpenGL API to get those names out. Um, so with uh, on Vulkan, uh, that's not possible. So to start with, um, you can't just put uniforms in this magic global namespace. You need to explicitly uh, give a hint to the driver where to put them. So in this case, the, the simplest way to convert the, the shader is just to make a push constant block. Um, and so once uh, these are compiled and given to the driver, the driver won't let you query the names, as I was saying. So uh, to um, set the value uh, in the test commands, instead of uh, setting the names there, we set the, um, uh, just using the offsets into uh, the uniform block. Um, and that's also incidentally the same um, that happens uh, when using SPURV on OpenGL, uh, the, the, the script that automatically So, um, so Shader Runner, um, uh, I don't exactly know the history, but uh, it, I get the impression it's just sort of started out quite small, as it's sort of grown organically over time, and it's now quite a large uh, single C file. Um, so <laughs> VK Runner is uh, written from scratch um, with a bit of hindsight, so I've tried to like uh, organize the code a bit more. So like the, the code to pass the um, the script is separated from the bits that execute it and so on. And also just because um, writing code for, for Vulkan, it, it's a lot more verbose, so obviously you just need to have a lot more code. Um, so uh, keeping it all in one file um, is not practical. Um, so I've also tried to make it so that um, uh, a lot of the commands are partially automatically generated. Uh, so for example, um, there's uh, test commands to set um, all of the properties um, that are known on a pipeline. And uh, so they're sort of uh, automatically taken from the, the header file, which um, describes the pipeline create info. Um, so uh, in VK Runner, there's a command for each member of the pipeline create info struct, uh, and it just sort of automatically puts the value in the right offset in the struct. Um, and the same goes for the, um, the formats that it uses. Um, because in Vulkan, um, it has a really nice um, enum for all of the formats. And they're structured in such a way that just looking at the name of the enum, you can work out exactly um, how to store data in that format. Um, so there's like a, a Python script in VK Runner to make a, a C table uh, out of those enum names. And then um, 
uh, so then VK Runner can work with um, uh, all the formats and like so if you have your frame buffer in any format uh, VK Runner can use the C table to work out how to extract RGB values from that um, to, to probe the, the buffer um, so, um, so some more examples to show some more features of what uh, VK Runner can do um, so, uh, so as well as sections for writing the, the shaders and the test section, uh, and the same as uh, with Shader Runner, um, there's a, um, a section for um, write, writing your vertex buffer. Um, so at the start of the, the section, there's a header to describe the attributes. And um, so the first part of each attribute um, is the location. Um, because in Vulkan you have to give an, an explicit location uh, to each attribute. And then the, the second part um, is the, the format name. So this is slightly different from Shader Runner. Um, in Shader Runner, um, because the GL format names are a bit strange, um, uh, it's easier in this case. You can just um, um, use the actual format names from the Vulkan enum, and it's, uh, it, that way it can support all of them. Um, uh, uh, for compatibility, uh, VK Runner can actually understand the, the the Piglet Shader Runner format as well. Um, so, so yeah, once you've written the the header there, um, you can just write the values out for for all your attributes, and um, uh, VK Runner can use the C table to figure out how to pack them into the struct. Um, so, just. To, to make it clear that uh, that's those two attributes there, that sets uh, input for your vertex shader. So uh, in Vulkan, you have to specify an explicit location, uh, and that specifies the input for those attributes there. Um, so uh, another section you can add, you can add the indices. Um, so if you add the indices section, uh, you can just list your indices uh, as numbers. Um, so then, in the test section, if so, just uh, combining those um, that vertex data with the indices um, in the test section uh, to, to actually draw something, then uh, then you can just use the draw arrays command. Uh, you can say index to use the index buffer, uh, and then you can set the uh, the topology um, using again using the GL enum. I think it, it supports the piglet enums as well um, for um, to make it easier to convert uh, piglet shader runner scripts. Um, and then in this case, I've uh, just added uh, uh, another command as well. Uh, so this is an example of what I was talking about with the um, automatically generated commands. So the primitive restart enable, that's uh, the name of uh, a member on the pipeline create info struct. Um, so setting that command just um, uh, sets that member on the pipeline create info struct to true. Uh, and then whenever you execute a command, uh, VK Runner works out what pipelines are needed and uh, creates all of the pipelines that are needed and then picks the right one to execute um, with that state that you described. Um, and it's got uh, obviously some defaults for all the state, so uh, uh, yeah, try to pick sensible defaults so most of the time you don't need to set anything. Um, so that script on the left, that's just a combination of those previous uh, examples I showed. Uh, and uh, if you run it, it uh, outputs this uh, messed up Begalia logo. Um, so uh, as I said, there's, there's no uh, actual WinSys, so there's no actual window when you run VK Runner, um, but there's an option to output the image if you do want to look at it. Um, so that's how I got that image. Um, so another section, uh, there's a require section. So this is also available in the uh, Piglet Shader Runner. So you can just... Um, uh, list an extension, for example, and uh, when the uh, VK Runner runs the test, it will check that that extension is available on the driver. And um, if it's not available, then the test will report um, skip. Um, so Piglet Shader Runner has um, already the, uh, uh, a convention to report either passed, skipped, or fail. Uh, so uh, VK Runner copies the same um, convention. Uh, so if the extension isn't available, then it's skipped. But also on Vulkan, um, as I'm sure you know, you have to, if you want to use an extension, n uh, not only do you have to check for it, you have to also uh, enable it. Um, so uh, VK Runner will do that as well. And uh, uh, unlike GL, um, as well as extensions, uh, Vulkan has uh, features. Um, so even things that are in core, um, a lot of things are optional. Um, 
so there's a, a struct to enable to check for and enable features. Uh, so the, the same thing is here. Um, I just took uh, the struct and um, converted them all into commands there. So um, if you list any member of that struct, it will check that the feature is available, and then um, if so, it will enable it. Um, and you, you can also uh, set the, the format of the frame buffer, um, again, using the, the format enums and the size. Um, uh, so um, it supports uh, all the shader stages, so compute shaders as well, uh, obviously. And um, so this is just a simple example uh, using an SSPO. Um, and it fills in um, a table of square roots. So instead of the draw command, you just have a compute uh, command to dispatch the compute. Um, and then uh, obviously it's not writing to the frame buffer, so um, it's writing to an SSBO, and uh, you can just um, probe the, the values in the SBO. Um, uh, so in all the previous examples, um, all the shader sections were written in GLSL, but if you want to, you can also um, specify a shader section with SPURV source. Um, so this is really useful if you want to test a, a corner case with SPURV because there's a lot of tests uh, that you might want to test that you, you can't get the GLSL compiler to generate the SPURV that you want. Um, so um, VK Runner has a command line option to when you run the test, um, you can make it dump out the um, SPURV disassembly uh, and then so you can uh, grab that disassembly, copy it back into your uh, shader test and then um, you can just modify it as, however you want uh, to get the, the corner case that you wanted to test. Um, so, so as well as GLSL and SPURV shader sections, you can also have a shader section which just literally lists the SPURV in binary format. Um, so obviously you don't want to write that by hand, but um, there is a, a Python script in the <coughs> VK Runner repo to, um, to batch convert uh, all of your tests to binary. So I guess the main reason you'd want to do that is if you want to run on an embedded platform, for example, where putting GLSL lang uh, is not really practical. Um, so that it, there's, once you run it through the script, uh, the, the, the test script looks like that. Um, so the, the current status, so um, it's, it can do all the shader stages. It can read and write from SSBOs and read from UBOs. Uh, it can do vertex data and simple drawing, and it can probe the frame buffer or SSBOs. Um, it has... Um, a library, so when you build it, it builds a, a little static library with a public header, um, so that was useful if you want to integrate it um, into uh, another test suite. Um, so I, it's quite self-explanatory, I hope. It just, you just uh, give it a source file and tell it to execute it, and it will tell you if it worked or not. Um, uh, so, so, uh, so far, uh, we've got VK Runner has been integrated into the Vulkan CTS suite, the Kronos CTS suite. Um, as far as I know, there's currently only um, experimental tests. I don't think there's any actual um, tests uh, relying on it. Um, and that is using the, the API that I mentioned um, so that it can run the tests without uh, forking ex any external processes. Um, so it's also integrated into to Piglet. Um, so Piglet has actual tests, real tests on it now, and um, it gets picked up by Intel's um, CI system. So if you write some, uh, if you implement some Vulkan features uh, and you want to make sure they don't get regressed, uh, the, the best way I think at the moment is to write, um, if it's a shader test, then write it as a VK runner test and just drop it into the Piglet repo. And if you just drop it anywhere under a certain directory, it should get picked up. Um, so hopefully there's like a really minimal barrier to, to adding shader tests for Vulkan. Um, so uh, where am I hoping to go with this? Um, so it's missing uh, quite a few features, probably the main one, which is quite bad, uh, it's missing image and texture support. Um, there's a pull request for this, um, but I uh, just need to review it and um, rebase it. Uh, and make that happen. Uh, I've written a raise of buffer bindings because there's an issue open for it, uh, but there's probably a lot of other things op uh, missing as well. Um, so uh, on a branch, uh, there's like a, a user interface. Um, I'm not sure whether it's particularly useful, but mostly just for fun. Uh, you can um, 
So it's just using DTK. Uh, you can write the, the test script uh, in the editor on the left, and the, uh, in the background, it continuously runs the test and tells you whether it failed or not um, and shows you the image uh, as a result. Um, so uh, sometimes in the past, when I've been writing uh, GL shader runner tests, and it just says fail, and it's quite a pain to keep tweaking all the data um, to get the image that you were expecting. Um, so some I was thinking it's quite nice maybe just to have a really tight feedback loop um, uh, with, with, the, with the user interface. So uh, there's another branch. This is getting more silly. Um, there's a, a branch for making animations. So uh, this just adds um, a uniform, a magic uniform to say the frame number. And then you can run the test uh, multiple times. Uh, and it will um, generate the, the, the output into a, a video via FFmpeg. Um, I, I just did this because it's kind of fun, but as if, if you know a shader toy, shader toy is like a, a site where you can create uh, lots of demos um, using WebGL and it's full of um, little animations. Um, it's quite easy just to convert those shader toy demos to run on VK Runner to make like a sort of crazy offline shader toy. But yeah, that's just for fun really. Um, so there's another project called Amber, uh, which Google are working on. Um, uh, I think. Uh, they were inspired by VK Runner, um, so that might be an interesting project to watch. To um, I will yet to see where it's going to lead. Um, so that's the the, the GitHub repo. Um, it's got the same license as Mesa and Piglet. Um, so uh, take a look. Uh, thanks. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I was wondering, kind of related to the video thing, um, in Shader Runner, you can interleave uh, probes with draw calls. And yeah. quite a number of tests actually use that. Yeah. Um, does that work there as well? Uh, it does work, yes. Um, there's some caveats because. Um, Oh, sorry. The question was, um, can you interleave um, probe and draw calls like you can um, um, in Piglet's shader runner? And the answer, yes, you can. Um, but there's um, uh, when you do a probe, um, it flashes the command buffer that it was building up. Uh, and then when you start uh, another command, it starts another command buffer. So it mostly works just transparently, but there's um, some slight you have to be aware that it's starting a new command buffer because when you start a new command buffer, um, it, it, Vulkan loses a lot of state. So, for example, if you set some push constants um, in uh, in one command buffer and then you do a probe, uh, you're going to have to set them again when you start drawing again because it's, it's going to forget them. Um, okay. I, I saw you said that you uh, use a uh, Python script to load the uh, data for working one. Are you going to support uh, uh, something like memory mapping for the digital memory access? It's very important feature for those who want to use weekend runner as a domain provide to those customers. Are you going to uh, support such a feature like digital memory access or memory mapping for uh, loading buffer? Um, and you have the I, here. The, so the, the question I was: Whether you have a start plan to support uh, more quickly loading the data from storage into the memory or digital to mapping it? So, uh, do you mean you. the the data for the script? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, with if you use the so the question was: Can you um, load data into the script? Um, Yes, but uh, would support uh, some future like GPU directly access uh, those memory in normal memory okay. with, without the inward uh, copying to the GPU buffer again. Okay, so at, at the moment with the API, um, you can uh, give it the whole script. That's all you can do. Um, and obviously the, the, the buffer, if you had any buffer data, that would be in ASCII, and then it would need to be a conversion process to convert that into memory somewhere. So if you want to um, uh, give it some data in a memory mapped buffer, um, yeah. it doesn't have support for that. No, but uh, that would be a good point. We can pre-compare some binary data, which will copy from some game, that's it. That's so you don't need need to uh, con conversion into the the graphic the graphic format uh, yeah. anymore. And uh, there's no no uh, uh, in the embedded device 
the GPU and the CPU use the same memory, don't have a separate memory. Yeah. So, it's so I, th I think if you, if you had a test with it which needed to have a really large input, um, then yeah, that would be a really good idea, just to add something to the API so that you can say... The um, correct API would support it. There is no limit in the API for that. Okay, so something in the script to say maybe... Oh, I just, just yeah. want to ask whether you have been considered this yeah, kind of thing. I haven't considered it, but I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, it's something yeah, to add. Um, but I think for, for, for the... For the moment, um, yeah, the, all the tests that we've encountered so far, they, they haven't used a, a lot of input data. So, so far, um, it's, it's just everything's contained in the script. But, I would okay. suggest either include pi priority task for, for the weekend run. Okay. <laughs> important factor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.